What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, this is a response to the tag video that was put out by Alex the Comic Hoarder. These are my top favorite five key comics that are in my collection. Stay tuned. Right, so before we get into this, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So Alex puts out these tag videos every once in a while. It's always fun to respond to them, uh, to put out you know, a video of your own, and to check out his. I mean, he's always got just crazy cool books that he shows, so make sure to go check out his video that he put out, I think about two weeks ago now. And so this one isn't your top five books, like your top five most valuable. This is your top five favorite key comics that you have in your collection. Now they can be valuable. In my case, a lot of them are relatively valuable books, but it's not like this is an order of value. This is an order of what I consider the most key or significant books to me that I own. So before we get into my five, I just want to tag a couple other people as well. I want to tag Aaron with Double A Comics, Mickey over at Swaggle House Comics, and Drew with Como Comics. Now with Mickey, I fully expect his list to be all Darkhawk, but, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what it ends up being. Now, let's get into these top five. Now the first one here, I'm starting at my number five. I mean, this one is just a critical, important book in Marvel, in the MCU, everything. We have got Eternals number one. Actually, no, I'm just kidding. That <laughs> no, Nobody cares about Eternals number one anymore. All right, so, so let's get into my number five. This is the number five on my list. This one, I, I spent a lot of time building up to this book. Uh, I, it is actually, let's see, of these five, three of them are on my keeper list. This one recently fell off of it. So this one isn't on the keeper list anymore, but it was for a pretty long time. This is Fantastic Four, number 49, 8.5. This is the first full appearance of Galactus, second appearance of Silver Surfer, first cover appearance of both Galactus and Silver Surfer. This, I mean, for me, the reason this one is so important is that when I was a kid, my favorite characters were Spider-Man, Thanos, and Silver Surfer. And so this is one of those characters that was just, to me, I collected when I was a kid. I bought all the... Uh, you know, the, it's like the volume two Silver Surfer books. And then I tried to get a few of the volume one. I mean, they was, were too expensive for me mostly as a kid, but I did have a couple of them when I was a kid. And, uh, but yeah, so I love collecting Silver Surfer stuff. I loved all the Infinity Gauntlet stuff that had Silver Surfer tied to it. And I just, for me, I love this cover. I like this cover more than issue 48. 48, it's, it's kind of a cool cover just because it's got that cool background tone to it, but you don't have Galactus or Silver Surfer on the cover. And so... To me, this one has been the one that I've always really liked the most of that trilogy of 48, 49, and 50. Uh, and so, yeah, this is this is number five on the list for me, 8.5. This is also a book that, just for awareness in comparison to 48, it is much more difficult to get this book in higher grades than to get 48 in higher grades. The reason being that 48, I don't know how long ago, maybe 20 years ago, 30 years ago, had a warehouse find. So there are a ton of really high grade copies of issue 48, but there are relatively very few copies, high grade copies of issue 49. For example, in a 9.8, there's only two now, and there had only been one for a while. And then in a recent heritage auction, another one had gotten graded. Uh, but for 48, there are quite a few more. I don't remember what it is offhand, but I'll, I'll put a note right down here for the total census count of 48 and a 9.8. But yeah, this is number five for me. Fantastic Four, number 49, first cover appearance of Galactus and Silver Surfer and first full appearance of Galactus. All right, so now number four. This one, I mean, childhood me didn't even know this book existed. That's actually probably true for, yeah, a couple of these on here. So childhood me didn't even know this existed, but adult me as, as what I've really gotten into collecting over the last few years, this has become an extremely important book. And so this one is Eerie Comics number one. And so what this is, is this is the first dedicated horror comic book. Uh, it's also got a pretty cool cover. You've got the good girl art type cover. You've got the, you know, it's people think it's Nosferatu on the cover here. Um, but yeah, you've got really cool, like grayish, purplish tone in the back. Uh, this one's a 2.5. I picked this book up from Bry's Comics. Uh, so I was real happy to get this one. This one has a, a big spine roll, so I've really been considering 
if I want to send it in to get uh, cracked out, pressed, and, and regraded to see if maybe I can get like a three or something. I mean, it's got staining and it's got creases and all that, but it presents really, really well for the grade. But for me, having really gotten into pre-code horror comics a lot over the last few years, it's really been the thing that I've really been going after and been most interested in. Uh, this is a critical book because this is one, it's not the first horror in comics, but it is the first dedicated horror comic book. And so it's just a, a really important book in the history of, of pre-code horror from 1947. So pretty early one, but uh, yeah, really happy to, uh, to have this one. And this is definitely one of my, one of my keeper books. All right. Now the next one, I've always been a pretty big Batman fan. Not as much when I was a kid. I mean, when I was a kid, like I said, I was, I was a Marvel fan. I was mostly into, you know, Spider-Man and, and Thanos and, and Silver Surfer and all that. But I did also like Batman. I liked watching the Batman movies when I was a kid, you know, seeing uh, Mr. Freeze, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze and all that kind of stuff. So this is the most significant Batman key that I personally own. And so that's why this one is on, on the list for me. Uh, this is number three, and it's also a pedigree book. And that's something, again, as a kid, I wasn't familiar with, but as an adult, I really like the pedigrees that are put out by CGC. I, I just, it adds something extra, something special to the book to me. Uh, I know some people don't like them, but it doesn't matter. That's, that's the thing that I like. So this is Detective Comics number 168. This is the first appearance of the Red Hood, who is the Joker. It is also the first origin story for the Joker. And so you have the origin story for uh, how the Joker becomes who he is. Uh, in this uh, in this issue, and just an amazing cover. I really like this cover. You've got the red hood right on the front. He's you know front and center. You've got Batman and Robin on there. Black background, and I'm a big fan of the black background Golden Age type books. They just as long as you don't have too much damage on them, they really really pop. And this one, despite being a 1.8, really doesn't have too much damage on the the main image of the book. Also the back. I mean the back looks incredible. Uh, I've I have felt that this is an undergraded book. Um, I've considered uh, seeing if I could get it cracked out and, and pressed and resubmitted, but I don't know if I really want to risk it. It's got some, it's detached and it's got some spine splitting and stuff, but I, I think I've seen other books with similar flaws get a two or 2.5. And so I do think that it's actually better than what it's, uh, what it's graded as, but uh, it definitely was never pressed or anything. You can see all the, like the waviness and stuff that's on these like you can see the you know down in the bottom there too but you know I, it is, I don't really care that much uh but it is something that's tempting tempting to do uh but yeah this one is also from the promise collection and so that's the pedigree that this is from that was this huge pedigree collection that was found and started to get sold in i think it was november of 2021 Something like that. That might have been the first time that that the uh, that those started auctioning. I don't remember for sure when the first ones were, um, but it was about five thousand books. It was a uh, two brothers basically, and so one of the brothers was a comic collector, uh, and he was drafted for the Korean War. And then his other brother, uh, when he got drafted, said he was going to go with him. They went. They went to the Korean War. Uh, the one that was the collector. Uh, said that if he doesn't come back, he wants his brother to, you made his brother make a promise to take care of it. And so the one brother did not come back, the one that was the collector and his brother did clearly take care of it because this collection was incredible. I mean, this having a 1.8 from that collection is really the only reason I can afford one of these books uh, because most of those books were 9.4, 9.6, from the golden age. I mean, just an, an incredible collection. Uh, but I really like the new gold labels that they have. I think that especially makes them pop against these black backgrounds. But I like having that history of the, uh, you know, the pedigree combined with the fact that this is a major first appearance for uh, the Golden Age, for DC, for Batman, and that origin for the Joker, who is arguably the biggest villain from any comic book series of all time. The most, probably the most recognized villain, at least, from any comic book of all time. So, yep, so that's uh, number three for me. Detective Comics number 168, first appearance of the Red Hood and the origin of the Joker. All right, now number two. This one actually isn't on my keeper list, uh, but this one, it's hard to argue against it being, you know, one of the top books on any list just because of the significance that it played. And this is Fantastic Four number one. Now this is a 2-0 and you can see it's apparent 
Uh, the reason it doesn't have like C1 or, or B1 or A1 or anything like that is that the only thing that's been done to this is that it was trimmed. And now they said the top edge was trimmed. I thought the right edge was trimmed, but they said it was only the top edge. And that's one of those challenges with trimming. Uh, trimming is really, really difficult to identify. And so, but regardless, you know, it's trimmed. And so that's why it just says a parent instead of some type of restoration because nothing was added to the book, really only something was, was taken away. Um, but it's a 2.0. I was not pleased <laughs> with this grade when I got it. Uh, I felt that this was extremely aggressive for the grading. It is a really nice presenting copy. It is fully attached. You know, there's no missing pieces. I mean, yeah, there's creases and there's like some spine splits and stuff, but I've just, I've always felt that they grade restored or purple label books harder than they grade the blue label ones. It's something I just feel like I see a lot where you see these purple books and they've just really hammered them. And, uh, you know, I don't know. It's one of those, just can't really do anything about it. But, uh, but yeah, so 2.0, obviously big deal. First appearance of the Fantastic Four. Also the first appearance of the, of the Mole Man, you know, really key character. Uh, but yeah, first appearance of Fantastic Four, basically the comic that for the most part saved Marvel, that transitioned Marvel into superheroes. And from this point forward, you got everything that came with that, you know, the X-Men, uh, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Thor, all that kind of stuff came after Fantastic Four number one. This was in 1961. This is one of the only 10 cent superhero books that's out there. So the earliest book for Marvel for superheroes and just an amazing classic cover where you've got them all on the cover. Uh, so, yep. This one is number two on my, on my favorite key comics that I have, the most significant to me key comics that I have in my collection. So Fantastic Four, number one. All right, so now for number one, and I had mentioned earlier how important pre-code horror, that type of, of uh, genre of comic has become to me uh, since I've really gotten back into collecting. And so number one had to be a pre-code horror comic. And to me, this is, I mean, it's arguably the most significant one that's out there uh, just because of how recognizable it is and it's just, it's one of those that was, it was used in the Senate hearings and just an extremely uh, well-known and copied cover. It's, you know, it's homaged a, a number of times as well. And so this is the Johnny Craig classic crime suspense stories, number 22, where you have, you know, the guy that has beheaded this woman on the cover, holding her head. Um, now, I mean, I feel like they did some things to try to like dial this one back a little bit. Like they put black on the, the axe instead of red for the blood. And they aren't actually showing like the base of her neck, uh, you know, things like that. There are little things that were, were done on this one to try to make it seem like a little more tame, I guess. But this really is, I mean, it's one of the most violent covers that that's out there. And you can see why this one was brought up in those Senate hearings. I mean, when they were basically trying to argue that comics were the thing that were destroying children, um, you know, that were ruining them with, you know, the violence and the, the sexual imagery and all that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, this one, it's, it's a little hard to argue with this one that it is uh, extremely violent, but, um, you know, it's still, it's a, it's a pretty incredible book. This is just, this was one that ever since I first saw it, I'd wanted to get a, a copy of it when I started getting into horror. And uh, this is the second one that I've gotten. This one is one that I bought raw, got it graded. Uh, another one that I don't usually disagree with, with my grades with CGC, but this was one that I, I also felt like uh, was a little bit undergraded. I thought a 5.5 uh, was where this one deserved to be because uh, it is, I mean, it's such a nice presenting copy. This was one where I realized how hard they were starting to hit tanning. Like you can see the tanning around the edges of this one. Um, but, uh, but yeah. This one is, I mean, it's it's my number one book currently in my collection in terms of significance, importance for as me to me for favorite books. This isn't necessarily the most valuable book in my collection, but it is a, a pretty expensive book. Uh, but it is still the most uh, important book to me in terms of what I am currently into collecting and what I've really gotten into over the you know the last few years. So those are the favorite five books that I have, the, my favorite keys that are in my collection. You know, anybody else that watches this video, even if I didn't tag you, make a video. You know, I will, uh, I'll share that out there, everything like that. And uh, yeah, I, I called out Aaron with AA Comics, Mickey at Swagga House Comics, and Drew with Como Comics. I'd love to see your, your favorite five, most significant five key comics that you have in your collection as well. So with that, 
Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.